tinakbay Dala itong mga aral Mga teoryang gumagabay Karanasang pinabaybay Narito ako para sa pagkakaisa Pagsulong narito ako Para sa pagwawasto Magdaluyong narito ako Para ang galat na lahat na pulo Magiging muong tabo Pagkakaisa, pagsulong, narito tayo Para sa pagwawasto, pagdaluyong, narito tayo Para ang kalat-kalat na pulo, magiging muog na buo Pagkakaisa, paglaban, pagumpay sa ating bayan sa daibigan paglaya ng sangkatauhan narito tayo para sa pagkakaisa pagsulong narito tayo para sa masangaping Pilipino narito tayo para ang kalat-kalat na pulo magiging muog Narito tayo para sa pagkakaisa Pagsulong, narito tayo para sa masang aping Pilipino Narito tayo para ang kalat-kalat na pulo Magiging muong na buong Ito ang dakilang misyon ng Pilipinong proletaryo Good afternoon, international comrades and to our migranteng kababayans. Magandang gabi naman po dyan sa Pilipinas. Mapagpalaing pagbati po para sa ating lahat. Bago po tayo magsimula, inaalala po namin ngayong uh, um, noong May 20 po ay ang 12th death anniversary ni Crispin Cabel Beltran, isang manggagawa, aktivista at makabayang mambabatas. Welcome back to the National Democratic Online School, the Labor Serie with Tito Jo. We are on our second episode po for this series. So please mga kasama, huwag nyo kaming susukuan. Samahan nyo kami for the next many weeks every Sunday, 3 p.m. Europe time. Please take note this on your calendar and stand by for updates sa aming Facebook group, ND Line Online. So, um, invitahan nyo po ang inyong mga kaibigan, kapamilya, at lahat ng inyong kakilala para mag-participate dito sa aming event dahil um, mas umalakas tayo kapag rumarami. Today po, we will be discussing value, price, and profit, which uh, which um, wrote by Karl Marx. He wrote it on 1865 but only published after his death on 1898. If you have questions po to, um, to Tito Jo, uh, please just drop it on the comment box. And later po, we will get back to it after the discussion. And we will have a question and answer portion with Tito Jo. And um, Tito Jo will answer that. No? So, um, huwag na po tayo magpaligoy-ligoy. Simulan na po uh, natin ang discussion. Please welcome Filipino writer, activist, internationalist, and NDFP consultant, uh, Tito Jo Masison. Hi, Tito. Kamusta po? Mapulang pagbati po sa inyo. Uh, Mahalab na revolusyonaryong pagbati uh, sa inyo sa program ito. Uh, kaangelo at sa lahat ng ating tagapakinig. Um, marapat na ihalay natin ang uh, programang ito uh, sa alala ni uh, Kabel uh, 
dahil ang paksa natin ay uh, ang uh, uh, halaga uh, dahil sa lakas paggawa at, at sa kabuan ng kilusang uh, uh, manggagawa. Ang kup lamang na uh, maalala natin ang uh, uh, ang malaking ambag ni ka uh, Bell uh, sa uh, pag-unlad ng kilusang uh, uh, paggawa sa Pilipinas. Tama po. So, um, Tito, simula na po natin yung uh, discussion no, para maaga po tayo makapagsimula. Um, question number one, Tito, can you give us a short context of what lead Marx to write uh, value, price, and profit? Uh, Marx found it necessary to write value, price, and profit and uh, address it to the first International Working Men's Association in 1865 in order to debunk and counter the line of the economist Weston that was futile and even self-defeating for the workers to demand and get higher wages because this would uh, supposedly increase the prices of commodities and would reduce the real value of wages. Such a line would undermine and weaken the trade union movement and uh, the workers' uh, movement in general, if not countered. So uh, Marx uh, pointed out that it was wrong for West Weston to claim that the value and amount of national production and the productive powers and subsistence needs of the workers are constant. He pointed out that national production and the productive powers of the working class uh, had kept on rising from year to year. But even if these remained constant or stagnant, any increase of wages would occur within the limits of the new material values created by the workers themselves. Within such limits, the capitalists would still get the surplus value, even if reduced by the increase of uh, uh, wage or what is called the price of labor. There may be fluctuations in the prices of commodities uh, in the market that result from the disparities of supply and demand, but in the long run, the prices of commodities tend to move towards the value of the commodity, commodity in terms of labor power contained in the commodity. In fact, the capitalists uh, offer to the market the commodities at their value and realize their profit by selling uh, the commodities at their uh, value. I must point out that uh, uh, the value of uh, the commodity is determined by labor power and um, uh, uh, it is produced because it has used value and exchange value and uh, a commodity uh, acquires that value only because uh, labor power is imparted uh, to the commodity in the process of production. All right. Tito, what is the effect of the increase of wages to the rate of profit of capitalists? Why is the dogma wages determine determine the pra, the price of commodities wrong? The effect of wage increases indeed to reduce the surplus value for the capitalist and therefore to lower the rate of profit. The rate of profit is surplus value in proportion to the invested capital. The increase or decrease of the paid labor and the corresponding increase or decrease of surplus uh, value occurs within the limits of the total amount of new material values created by the workers. If the wages rise, the workers will improve the level of their subsistence and possibly skills. But the capitalist is sure, is always sure to get the surplus value that covers his industrial profit, interest payments to the bank, and rent to the landlord. If the workers do not fight for wage increase, the capitalist will just continue increasing the surplus value that he gets. The, the dogma that uh, wages determine the price of commodities is wrong because it presumes that the rise or fall of wages determines the prices of commodities in the market. According to the conditions of supply of and demand for the commodities in the market, 
at various times, the prices of commodities fluctuate, but they do so around the value of the commodities determined beforehand by the labor power they contained and not by the wages paid by the capitalists to the workers. In the long run, prices settle down or even, uh, even up uh, at the value of the commodity as determined by socially necessary labor power required to produce them. How, how then is the value of commodity determined? A commodity is produced because it satisfies a human want or necessity and it must have use value as well as exchange value. Uh, you know, sometimes a thing is produced, you know, you, uh, uh, let's say by picking fruit in, in, in the park, you know, if you just, uh, if the one uh, picking the fruit will just eat the, uh, the thing immediately, it has use value, but uh, uh, there's nothing more to exchange, no? <laughs> if you are going to produce a lot of berries, and then you have to do a lot of farming to produce those and uh, bring, uh, bring uh, the amount of berries for so many people to the market. So uh, there must be exchange value if a thing has to have, uh, has, uh, if a thing uh, uh, can be called a commodity. The value of the commodity is determined at the production site by the amount of labor power that is socially necessary to produce the commodity plus the value transferred from uh, previously congealed labor power in the means of production, uh, like uh, factory building, machinery, tools, raw materials, and so on. The sum of new values and uh, portions of the previous values in the means of production constitute the total value of the commodity. So, um, it is not just, uh, we have been repeating the expression socially necessary. What is socially necessary is, you know, the average time necessary to produce and then, of course, um, the, um, there is an obligation on the part of, um, of uh, the capitalists to provide uh, for the subsist, for, for uh, wages that are sufficient to make the worker and his family subsist. Uh, otherwise, the worker cannot show up the next day uh, to work again. Uh, so, um, the wages given uh, amounts only to a, uh, what is equivalent to uh, a, a portion of uh, the total value created by the workers. And the tot um, that means uh, uh, what is called uh, paid labor, and uh, beyond that, uh, the capitalist gets the, the surplus value. But uh, in the making of a commodity, you you have uh, the um, you have uh, new material values or use value and uh, exchange value created uh, anew by uh, the workers. And uh, you know there is the wear and tear or the precision of the means of production. So. Um, there is a combination of uh, portions of the value of conceded labor in the means of production um, combining with the current uh, value of uh, the labor power uh, that uh, the workers exert. So that's a combination of uh, dead and living labor and uh, by virtue of the capitalist ownership of the means of production, which is dead labor, uh, Dead labor practically eh, uh, dominates eh, the, the living labor of uh, the workers uh, who are uh, hired or whose labor power is bought by the capitalists to produce the commodity. Tito, ano po bang difference ng price or presyo with value or halaga? The value of the commodity is something created by labor power. Price is merely the money expression in the market for the value of the commodity that has been predetermined at the production site. Uh, however, the price of a commodity can fluctuate according to the market conditions of supply and demand, but it also gravitates around the value of the commodity 
that has been created by labor power and ultimately settles at that value by an evening of the price fluctuations. This means, you know, the value, the commodity has intrinsic value because of the labor power imparted to it, no? Uh, by current labor, living labor, and uh, previous uh, congealed labor. So, um, now, but people get confused because uh, uh, the commodity uh, is assigned prices in the market, no? But, you know, the prices only sort of reflect the value. And because of disparities in uh, uh, supply and demand, uh, there are price fluctuations. But uh, uh, studies have shown that uh, even as uh, prices fluctuate, they even up in the long run. They, they don't run away. They don't run away from the intrinsic value of the commodity. The intrinsic value of the commodity is really in the labor power imparted to make the thing uh, useful and exchangeable. No? So uh, 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 there should be the, the, uh, uh, what you call value of a commodity and the price are two different things. Uh, the intrinsic value and uh, the pricing that is done in the market. Uh, but of course, there are expressions like... Uh, uh, profit is realized in the market. Of course, uh, profit uh, finally uh, takes the form of money as a result of the, uh, uh, you know, the exchange through money. But uh, um, beforehand at the production side, the, the surplus value has already been extracted by the capitalist because the thing in itself is in his hands. Uh, before he delivers it to the market. According to Marx dito, commodities are sold at their real values and that profits are derived from selling them at their values. What then creates profits? Yes, uh, I went a little bit ahead in the, in taking up practically this question, but, but uh, uh, I, it's good for me to uh, say something more about how uh, uh, profits are derived from selling uh, in the market. Profits are derived from the unpaid labor of the workers at the production side. The unpaid labor or surplus value on top of the paid labor or wages is composed mainly of industrial profit plus the interest paid to the bank and rent to the landowner. Commodities are sold in the market at their real values even as the prices fluctuate around said values. There are limits to overpricing and underpricing um, uh, around said values. You know, if you, if you um, overprice too much all the time or underprice, you lose. Uh, you, uh, you price yourself out of the market. You, you take yourself as a seller, you take yourself out of the market. And then um, your customers will not buy anything from you if uh, uh, the price to be paid is too much, you know? And they are not going to give away the products unless it's already, you know, stale veg, it's already uh, um, vegetable, you know, in the market. Uh, people uh, give away uh, sometimes uh, uh, perishables uh, like vegetables if they have already made their... Uh, uh, they have already sold it up. But then, you know, these giveaways are part of the business of, uh, let's say, recovering in terms of uh, money, uh, the labor power exerted in the production on those veg veg vegetables. So the, there is a, uh, uh, what you call, a balancing out no? of uh, the ups and downs of prices. Tito, what is the urgent task? for the people to push fair wages without inflating the price of the commodities. As explained by Marx, fair wages or any increase of wages can only come from the total value of the commodity created by the workers and can only result from some reduction of the surplus value. Yeah, this is the unfair relationship between the workers and the capitalists. You know, the capitalists just pays wages which is equivalent to a part of the total product, the total value created by the worker. And he, he gets to own the, the entire value created by the worker. And um, 
uh, the, the worker and the capitalist stay within the limits of that total value created. Uh, so wage increase can spell a uh, decrease of the surplus value, but then the capitalist will still uh, get a lot of surplus value from so many workers. So, um, and you know, uh, when uh, paid labor and surplus value uh, are uh, completely um, what you might call assigned uh, to the workers and to the capitalist uh, in a manner of speaking, uh, that means uh, they, they cannot exceed, yeah? the sum cannot exceed uh, the total value created by the workers. So uh, that is contrary to the claim of Weston and bourgeois and bourgeois economists. In fact, raising wages of the workers uh, increases their buying power and expands the market, no? So it's not necessarily bad, no? For It's not bad at all for the, the capitalists to be nice to their workers. And uh, workers should not uh, uh, be afraid of demanding uh, wages. Uh, anyway, uh, it is the urgent task of the people to propagate the explanation of Marx and to demand wage increases. They must support the revolutionary party of the proletariat and the trade unions in demanding wage increases and in arousing, organizing, and mobilizing the workers for the purpose. By demanding wage increases, the workers are asking for an increase in their share of the value of the commodity that they have created. In times of business decline, the capitalist is always sure to press down wages. But even in times of business boom, he does not raise the wages unless pressed by the collective demand and actions of the workers and the trade unions. Pressing down the wages of the workers results in increasing the surplus value or profits of the capitalist. It means escalating expo exploitation, the rate of which you can compute by looking at the proportion of uh, surplus value uh, to paid labor or wages. Dito, isn't the essence of business is to really gain profit so it could expand? So uh, how can we redefine the purpose of um, and definition of business then? Uh, indeed, in the capitalist system, the capitalist owns the means of production and buys labor power to work on them and make profits by extracting surplus value from the total new material values created by the workers. It is at the production site that the value of the commodity is created by labor power and it is in the market that the capitalist realizes his profit in money form. The more surplus value or profits that the capitalist can gain, the faster he can accumulate capital and keep on increasing what is called the organic composition of capital, which is the rising proportion of constant capital uh, in the means of production, like buildings, machines, tools, raw materials, and so on, at the expense of the variable uh, capital for wages. The, the result is self-defeating for the capitalist because the rate of profit tends to fall as, you know, as the capitalist favor, you know, uh, the uh, accumulation of uh, of what is called constant capital in the form of equipment, raw materials, and so on, um, and he shrinks the he shrinks the the amount that uh, is that he spends for wages. Then the crisis of overproduction looms in relation to the decreasing wages for the workers, and that spells disaster um, to the capitalist system. So you have this alternation of uh, bus, booms and busts. Um, the, this results in the lesser purchasing power and the shrinkage of the market. That's the result of uh, capitalist greed. When they, the capitalists accumulate too much and uh, by pressing down wages, then they undermine their own market uh, because the uh, buying power of the, um, uh, of the workers is... Uh, reduced. You know, the, the, the workers themselves should not be able to buy what they produce. And that's the uh, um, 
irony of the capitalist system. Uh, so, uh, you know, the neoliberals argue, well, it's good for the capitalists to have as much as capital, as much capital uh, as they uh, can have uh, by shrinking the wages, huh? because anyway, they will create uh, more jobs and they, they are the ones creating wealth, not the workers. Huh? That's the that's this crazy uh, premise of the neoliberals. But uh, in fact, you know, neoliberalism is now um, un unraveling precisely because of the extreme greed uh, in uh, under the neoliberal economic policy regime. You know, the capitalist uh, uh, is allowed to uh, accumulate capital very quickly at the expense of wages, and then he gets tax exemptions, and then he privatizes uh, public uh, assets which are profitable, and so on and so forth. So under the system, um, again, all the ills of the capitalist system are coming out and this gives a chance uh, to the working class and the people to rise up and uh, fight for a new social system. In a socialist society, Tito, how will wages be determined? In socialist society, there is no capitalist class that privately owns the means of production and that keeps on increasing its private profit and accumulating capital uh, through uh, the extraction of uh, uh, surplus value. The owners uh, of uh, uh, the workers, uh, the, the owners, the owners of the means of production are the workers and the rest of the people and their uh, state. No? Therefore, any increase of production and productivity means higher wages and a higher standard of living and culture for the workers in accordance with the socialist principle uh, from each according to the ability to each according to his deed. Uh, it's not true that, you know, uh, everybody will get a uniform amount of per wages. Oh, in the social society, there will still be consideration of uh, uh, the differences of productivity uh, among the workers. Ah, but no one will be allowed to starve, no? Uh, there is what... Uh, uh, amounts to what you call the basic, uh, the basic uh, uh, wage that will uh, uh, give everyone a decent level of life. But then, of course, uh, there are incentives for uh, higher productivity. So uh, anyway, full employment is assured, no? And uh, uh, those who cannot work, eh? those who are disabled or uh, sick. They're taken care of by uh, the entire social system. There is a system for providing for, their, for the means of those who cannot work. Um, now, the entire society benefits from greater amounts of resources for capital reproduction. So it's not, you know, it's not simply di dividing the fruits of labor in a simplistic way. Uh, society must provide for capital reproduction. Uh, expansion of employment and social services uh, for education, health, housing, and so on. Protection of the environment, more efficient administration, uh, national defense, and uh, internal security, and so on. Why, why national defense and internal security? Because the imperialism is still around, threatening the socialist society. So, um, you know, what you might call the social profit is divisible into many uses for the good of society. It is, uh, it is no longer a capitalist class that profits from the labor power of the workers, but it is the entire society. However, I must clarify that in the case of underdeveloped countries, like uh, a semi-colonial and semi-feudal Philippines, the proletariat and the rest of the people must first win the People's Democratic Revolution, um, against imperialism, feudalism, um, and bureaucrat capitalism in order to complete bourgeois, the bourgeois, bourgeois democratic reforms, capture the commanding heights of the economy, and begin socialist revolution and construction. 
uh, you know, the People's Democratic Revolution has a socialist perspective, but uh, you cannot immediately carry out all the socialist measures while you are still fighting uh, U.S. imperialism, feudalism, bureaucrat capitalism. But the moment uh, power goes to the hands of the working class, then it can begin the socialist revolution and construction. That's why, you know, even if uh, uh, the Soviet Union had to go through a lot of uh, difficulties and uh, uh, transition measures like new economic policy, um, the very seizure of political power and uh, the, uh, um, uh, the control by the working class exercise of the means of production and the sources of raw materials and the means of transport uh, already assure that uh, uh, socialism uh, has begun uh, in uh, a certain country where that occurs. Uh, that's why, you know, uh, as early as um, upon the seizure of political power in October 2000, 1917, uh, the, the name of the revolution was already socialist, the Great October Socialist Revolution. What do you think, Tito, are the most important tactics for improving the living standard of workers? Uh, first of all, it is necessary to build and develop a revolutionary party of the proletariat that is guided by Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, that understands how labor power created previous material values in products for use and exchange, and continues to create such values in maintaining and developing the economy, and that defines and implements the strategy and tactics of mobilizing and coordinating both the overall and all-round political struggle of the aforesaid party and the economic struggle uh, carried out by the trade un union movement in order to raise the wage and living conditions of the workers. The trade union struggle for higher wages and better wage and living conditions is so much bigger, stronger, so much stronger and more effective when combined with the political struggle of the broad masses of the people who are uh, led by uh, a proletar the proletarian party, the working class is so much inspired to fight for its rights and interests when it knows the revolutionary context and socialist direction of the struggle for immediate economic and social aims. Trade union struggle as merely any, as an economic struggle within the confines of capitalist society falls short of the need for a revolutionary political struggle to overthrow the class dictatorship of the bourgeoisie, end exploitative capitalist society, and establish a socialist society. Building socialism is the historic mission of the proletariat and uh, the rest of the people. You know, in the history of the working class, it was possible to have a trade union movement even before a communist party could be established. Um, indeed, it can subsist, but it is not enough uh, to, for the workers to be able to uh, assert effectively and win in their struggle uh, for uh, their rights and interests. There has to be a party revolutionary enough to show the socialist direction and make sure that all efforts of the workers in the trade union movement, uh, in other movements, uh, uh, lead to the uh, uh, overthrow of the class dictatorship of the proletariat, um, so that the class dictatorship of the uh, proletariat uh, would be able to fulfill, start fulfilling the historic mission of the proletariat in the uh, Building socialism. Uh, people should not be, you know, taken aback, you know? uh, should not be jolted by the term uh, class dictatorship. It's not the personal dictatorship of Duterte, no? It means only state power, no? That is a strong expression used to stress the point eh? that the class uh, takes, over, takes over power, seizes power from the, the bourgeoisie. And the bourgeoisie has its, 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 its in the first place. It's uh, state power, 
which is a class dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. So these are uh, practical scientific terms in uh, political science. As much as you know, we've been coming up with uh, uh, terms in political economy. All right. Thank you, Tito, for that um, question, um, for answering our questions. We will be um, starting our question and answer portion. So if you have question for Tito Jo um, to our audience, no, you could drop it sa aming comment box and we will answer it after the break. So magbabalik po tayo after ng isang tribute video para kay Ka Beltran, uh, para sa alaala po ni Ka Beltran. Hmm. Pagmitiling lumayan Sa pagkakatali sa lupa Mula sa kanayunan Mga magsasakay Pupus sa syudad Mula sa mga pabrik at pagawaan Pagpupuklod ang mga manggagawa Kanilang pamunuhan ang laban Ang aming sampayan Lumating ang balita mula sa uh, Assistant Secretary General ng Bayan Muna na natukoy na ang tama sa katawan ni kasamang Eden Marsilian. At ito po ay dalawang punlo na pumasok dito sa kanyang bato at lumabas po sa kanyang mukha. Ang isa pong punlo ay lumabas sa kanyang mata. Ganon din po. Si kasamang Eddie ay may tama ng isang punlo sa bato at lumabas din po sa kanyang mukha. Parumal-dumal na pagpatay. Minalifest namin ito ng ubod ng taginting sa loob ng tungreso. Ang puso natin, mga damdamin, ating bisig ay magkakasama. Matatamo natin ang katarungan, kapayapaan, kalayaan, at katahinigan dito sa atin. Maraming salamat. Sa wakas ay nagpalaya na rin ako. Matapos sa may gintisang taon, napalaya na rin ako. Sa kabila ng potuloy na pang-uusig ng Rehiming U.S. U.S. Bakapagal Arroyo, nakita ng Korte Suprema ang iligal na pag-aresto, arbitrario, ang pagkulong at walang batayan ang gawagawang kaso ng gobyerno laban sa akin at sa ating mga kasamahan. Ang God! Walang justisya hanggat walang pagkain, hanggat walang katarungang panglipunan, mga kasama, dito sa ating bansa, walang kapayapaan, mga kasama. Ayong kapayapaan na yun ang isulong natin at kanitin natin sa pamamagitan ng revolusyon ng sambayarang Pilipino upang matamu natin sa panghuli ang karapatang ang tao. Sa ating bansa. Sabi na ninyo, 
ang itinatag ninyo ay isang union na tunay kalaban at antimperialistang union mga kasama ang ating laban ay nahahati sa tatlo ang antipyudal na pakikibaka ang pangalawa ay antipasistang pakikibaka laban doon sa mga pagpatay sa atin mga pagkulong mga pagdukot mga kasama lalabanan natin sila dyan huwag silang magalala Diyak naman magtatagumpay tayo sa antipyudal, antipasista at antimperialisting makikibaka. Ang susulpo, mga kasama, ay ang tagumpay ng pambansang kalayaan at demokrasya dito sa ating bayan at susulpo ang sosyalismo sa ating kapaliginan. Sapagkat wala namang mawawala sa atin kung di ang ating mga kadena. Maraming salamat! Maraming salamat! Mabuhay ang uring manggagawa! Mabuhay ang sambayan ng Pilipinas! KM! 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 sa ating question and answer portion uh, mga kasama um, um, inopen na po namin ng floor para sa isang question and answer portion so if you have questions po um, just uh, jot it down sa aming comment box and um, will Tito Jo will answer it for you mamaya maya po so the first question po Tito um, what would happen to the workers workers' wages if there are no trade unions? Well, the workers uh, would, would be at the complete mercy of the merciless <laughs> capitalists without trade unions. And um, if you, uh, kung baybayin natin yung kasaysayan ng ano, pagsulpot ng trade union, kasi yung trade union is a uh, significant development uh, in the struggle of the workers to fight for its own interest, no? Sa panahon na ano, uh, practically ang capitalist class ang lumilikha sa mga workers. You know? uh, so many people are asking for jobs that come from the countryside. They were, uh, kumbaga sa history ng England, eh, na enclosure movement. Tapos uh, yung uh, marami yung ano na, naging surplus population sa countryside. So they had to go to the cities to work. No? So, 
ano yon yung kawawa sila hanggang ano 16 or 18 hours uh, alam mo wages it can also be extract um, I mean to say surplus value um, can also be extracted by lengthening the working hours no that's a way of ano um, that's a way of getting more out of the wages that you pay eh, to the uh, to the workers tapos ang uh, pinatatrabaho diyan ang mga uh, hindi lang kalalakihan kundi kababayan hanggang sa mga bata ha eh? so uh, ang unang ang nangyari diyan uh, naging, naging kawawa ang mga manggagawa kaya yung uh, habang class in itself pa lang sila at uh, class na kabubuo uh, sa initiative ng uh, capitalist class yung chartist movement ang sumusuporta uh, sa kanila at uh, uh, nagpapahiwatik ng gano'ng kasama yung kondisyon nila but eventually nag-train union na yan ang first stage in uh, uh, what is called the uh, development uh, of the class, working class, as a class for itself. No? Makikita natin yan sa future discussions, uh, Communist Manifesto, we'll, we'll go over this again. And then, the higher stage, of course, noong naging, uh, ano na, nagbuo na ng uh, party. And it was quite, uh, uh, of course, may mga germinal, uh, Uh, beginnings ng party, may Communist League na siyang uh, uh, humingi kay Marx and uh, Engels na mag-issue ng Communist Manifesto. Uh, pero at the time, ano pa, um, yung, ano, yung bagamat may mga workers uprisings all over Europe, yung Revolutionary Party was still in the process of strengthening itself. But anyway, nung nagkaroon ng first uh, International Working Men's Association, Uh, naging maliwanag yung pangangailangan. At saka nung nag-Paris Commune of uh, 1871, nakita nila kung paano ano, uh, paano mangyari ng mga workers, mga agaw ng kapangyarihan. No? At uh, sila ay uh, mamulo at uh, uh, kumilos para sa kanilang kapakanan. But anyway, um, yung ano, yung ano, kung tinan natin yung ano, yung uh, extraction of surplus value through the lengthening of hours. Alam nyo, yung 10-hour eh, uh, law, uh, sumulpot na lang. Kwan, eh, uh, um, yung uh, uh, lampas na sa kalagitnaan ng 19th century. At saka yung, uh, kung lumundag tayo, yung 8-hour ano, law sa 20th century na yan. Kaya, yung mga wang manggagawa, mapipiga mo, In two ways, mapipiga ng kapitalista in two ways. Una, babaan mo yung sahod. Dahil marami silang humihingi ng trabaho, uh, you take advantage of the fact na that there is a reserve, uh, a big reserve army of unemployed. Okay? So, you make them, uh, you take advantage of that. Lower the wages. And then you make them work longer hours. Uh, up to 16 or 18 hours. Yung abuso. So, uh, iyan ay matatawag mong wage slavery. Uh, para bang ano, yung uh, uh, yung mga manggagawa wala na silang ano, parang wala nang kontrol sa sarili, walang dignidad, you know, inaalis sa kanila, ginagawang parang hayop. Kasi sa kasaysayan ng ano eh, ng pangalipin, di ba? Yung tao mismo pag-aari ng slave master at uh, magnararasyon lang patapos pat uh, may patatarabawin ng amo hanggang gusto at uh, pwede niyang patayin kung gusto niya. Uh, so pagkatapos naman sa feudal slavery, serfdom, yun ano, uh, kunwari, yung magsasaka, eh, kwan, meron siyang sariling lupang sinasaka pero pinatatarabaho sa mas malawak, mas maraming araw sa mas malawak na lupa ng, ano, <laughs> ng uh, landlord. Uh, tapos, yan naman ito, Uh, we can discuss further how wage slavery works, no? And why Marx called uh, for its abolition. But anyway, pag walang trade union, kawawa mga manggagawa, kasi nakita natin sa panahon na walang trade union, ang, mga, ang pasahon napakababa, working time, umaabot ng 16 hanggang 18 hours sa Industrial Revolution ng, ano, ng England. So, eh, ganoon. Um, kapag may union ka, 
ano, uh, pwede kang umasa sa sariling mong dahil sa uh, sariling pakikibaka ng uh, orang manggagawa, maasahan na, may inasahan sila ng mga karapatan nila. Mga karapatan nila. Uh, may tataguyod at yung, uh, yung ano, mapalaki nila yung kanilang uh, wages. Even if, ano, yung uh, without a revolutionary party kasi naunang trade union movement sa party. Part, yung kan, effective uh, revolutionary party. So, but even then, uh, the unions demonstrated their value in fighting for the economic interest of uh, uh, the workers. All right. Next question dito, uh, what, uh, what would happen if we don't have wages? What does Marx mean by abolition of wages? Ang ibig sabihin ni Marx sa salitang abolition of wage slavery, yun ano, uh, the capitalist owns what is produced by the workers. Uh, in the form of the means of uh, production, which was previously, uh, which were previously created by labor power, and then uh, Marx described this in another writing. No, now um, what is uh, the means of production? Um, it's nothing but congealed labor, na tipon na labor, at it is dead labor in the sense that it cannot produce any new value by itself. No? A machine cannot produce anything without leaving labor using it. Okay? So, the capitalist owns the means of production and then pays wages um, equivalent only to a small part of the total value of the new total value created by the workers. Uh, so, um, the the capitalist increases keeps uh, increases his uh, profits by increasing the surplus value and giving less wages as much as he can without trade unions he can do that press down wages as even you know in the in the latest time you know, in uh, as late as our uh, time in the last four decades under neoliberalism you see how uh, job tenure uh, and you know uh, wages have been put down. And then, you know, those who cannot find jobs would be given, you know, the, what do you call the shit jobs, the McDonald type jobs, you know? Uh, people are work, um, forced to work two or three jobs to, uh, to, uh, to subsist. Okay, so what Marx meant uh, by abolishing wage slavery um, is abolishing the system in which the workers depend on the payment of wages by the capitalists. To the workers, um, Marx did not mean that there will be no more wage system under socialism. What he meant uh, is to abolish uh, precisely uh, the system of exploitation in which uh, the capitalist class pays um, uh, a small wage, which represents only a small part of the total value created by the workers, but the capitalist. Uh, takes all, all that is produced by the workers. So it's a form of slavery. Uh, wala parang walang ikinaiba sa ano, pagrarasyon sa mga alipin uh, during the time of slavery. Yung mga alipin naman eh, pinapakain, uh, may binibigyan ng tulugan, uh, pero wala silang ano, pag-aari. Yung, uh, uh, in that way, because the capital, because the workers, are limited to bare subsistence. If the work, if the capitalist has its way, the capitalist will only give bare subsistence. Eh? Wala nang higher levels of ano, uh, living and uh, culture. No? Uh, workers cannot send children to school, etc. No? But children even have to work in the factories as in the early part of the, um, as in, um, in much of the 19th century in England. So, uh, what Marx wants to be abolished is the uh, system whereby the capitalist pays uh, uh, so much wage uh, and then he owns everything produced by the, uh, by the workers. Kaya ba ito sa pinaliwanag ko sa socialist society? 
If the workers increase production, then they, they benefit from it by having higher wages. And the society as a whole, through representatives of the working class, would uh, uh, properly allot eh, the uh, increased income uh, of the whole society for expanding production and employment, uh, expanding social services and so on. So, ano, mawawala yung ano, yung sistema na yung uh, kapitalista para siyang ano, owner, owner of the uh, of uh, uh, the wage workers. Hello. Sorry, um, I've got disconnected po. Um, next question, Tito. Um, how would the national industrialization affect the relationship between workers and capitalists? How are we going to achieve uh, this in case of the Philippines? Um, in the particular case of the Philippines, which is underdeveloped and which is under imperialist domination, uh, industry is very much uh, underdeveloped. As, as a matter of fact, we have what is called industry, but uh, it's a kind of industry that has no, that does not produce capital goods, does not produce uh, um, uh, uh, machines, machine tools. It does not produce. Uh, uh, the most important chemicals and so on, no? So, uh, there is a need for national industrialization. Since uh, we are still in a uh, semi-colonial and um, semi-feudal type of economy, uh, the actual ruling, uh, the actual chief ruling class in the Philippines is the uh, uh, Comprador Big Bourgeoisie. Yung mga Ayala, mga billiard, mga ano, yung nasa Makati, uh, actually, uh, traditionally, uh, dating mga big landlords yan. Uh, mga, kung naman yan, mga Kastila na yan, eh, kung, eh. mga uh, asyenda managers lang ng mga prior states. Eh. Nung, ano, nung nag, ang Pilipinas it gained independence from Spain, ano yan, nag-entrepreneur na sila. Uh, naging owners pa nga sila ng mga asyenda, dating asyenda ng mga prile. Uh, sa ilalim ng Peking land reform ng US. Tapos, nagtatayo sila ng uh, uh, mga comprador banks, merchant banks, no? tulad ng Philippine Bank of the Philippine Islands, and so on. These are basically, you know, these are basically, these banks are basically merchant banks. Uh, it, they're not banks as in an imperialist country where banks are used not only to support trading by the merchants, but also to support uh, 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 establishment and operation of um, of industries, okay? So the Philippines is, the Madaling Salita, Philippines is underdeveloped. It is uh, needful, it is in need of uh, national industrialization. And by virtue of the social structure and the different classes, um, the national capitalists may still have a role. And uh, in the United Front against imperialism, they can be given a role and that, that means to say, you know, uh, it's better to uh, to give them a role than just to let them uh, with no role, but to kiss the ass of the imperialists, because the imperialists can always offer, you know, some concessions to the national capitalists, and your national capitalists would disappear, would become ineffective, no? So it's better for the national united front to include them in the struggle. Of course, uh, of course, the struggle is based mainly on the leadership of the, is guided mainly by the working class, and it is based on the worker-peasant alliance, and it, uh, most important of the middle forces are the intelligentsia. Then you have this uh, uh, national uh, bourgeoisie that has some industry and would like to, um, to go along with the line of national industrialization. So, um, they are needed to um, to increase, to amplify the strength of the United Front. But it does not mean that uh, the future belongs to them. They are only given concessions, and um, it so happens that uh, they have some amount of capital and they have uh, professional skills, so 
they better uh, contribute it to the uh, National United Front. And there's another thing, uh, aside from the, in the United Front, aside from winning over the middle forces, you have to, uh, you have to take advantage of the splits of the big, uh, of the big compradors. And um, because among the big compradors, nagkakaroon sila ng mga political and economic uh, uh, contradictions. Uh, Doon lang lang sa pagpili ng kung sinong presidente ang gusto nila uh, para makinabang sila. May bloki-bloki yan eh, paksyon-paksyon. Kaya ano yan, maganda para sa revolutionary movement kung sila ay kwan. Ang manatiling hati-hati at nalalaman ng kilo sa revolutionaryo. But you know, uh, if you will try to cover the full range of the necessary National United Front to carry out the Philippine Revolution, which includes national industrialization, even during only the bourgeois democratic revolution of the new type, led by the proletariat, you know, you uh, leadership of the working class, basic alliance of workers and peasants, um, winning over the middle forces, and taking advantage of the splits among the reactionaries in order to isolate and destroy the power of the current uh, enemy. Uh, so that's, that's the case. And um, of course, when power shall be won by the working class, they may give concessions still uh, to the national bourgeoisie by way of, uh, you, don't, you don't kick them right away when the, the revolution wins because they have, uh, it would be better to make use of their capital and, um, um, and skills. So, uh, sinasadya yan, may state private corporation na tinatayo. Tingnan ninyo yan sa ano, development ng socialism sa Russia o sa China. Uh, in the period of transition, while the workers are strengthening themselves and uh, gaining experience and uh, making progress uh, sa uh, what amounts what you might call national industrialization, ano yun? Merong, ano, merong uh, uh, transitory measures which still, even after the revolution, which allows the national capitalists to, uh, uh, to be able to contribute to uh, the process of national industrialization. But, of course, the socialist sector, you know, even in land reform, eh, you create uh, so many petty bourgeois when you distribute land. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, how do you counter, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, what you call, uh, the strengthening of the bourgeoisie through the petty bourgeoisie? You know, introduce agricultural cooperation, no? Cooperatives is the way. Because anyway, uh, anyway, uh, the... Uh, ano naman eh, yung sinasaka, hindi lumalaki, ang posible lumalaki, industry, huh? So, uh, mamaya-maya, how do you counter yung uh, pagsupot pa rin ng surplus population in the countryside? So, meron ka ng uh, socialization of the land, no? meron ka ng, uh, tawag yan, cooperativization. Um, so, um, ang paraan mo dyan, uh, industry. Is industry is the wide open. In the Philippines today, um, uh, people who, who get to have some surpluses, like uh, landlords and uh, rich peasants, merchants, uh, they have no way of reinvesting but within the confines of the semi-feudal system. Walang industrialization eh. Um, and then, yung mga uh, malaki-laking mga comprador uh, bourgeois, enjoy na sila doon sa ano, making money on being uh, the principal agents of foreign monopoly capitalism in ano uh, ba? Yung in trading and banking, putting up shopping malls, uh, condominiums, yun ang bagong ano eh, yun ang bagong racket ng mga kom malaking komprador eh. Pagkatapos yung import-export ng mga ano, yung materials sa Pilipinas, exported and then kapalit yung, yung ano, finished products. So, national industrialization is a key, is a key thing to do uh, to make the Philippine Revolution. Um, and... Uh, you, this can be done only if the working class would gain power through the new democratic revolution and it and then uh, it takes full command when 
the socialist revolution begins. Next question, Tito. Um, this is from uh, IMA Europe. In a socialist economy, is profit still realized? What? Um, what you might call private profit for the private capital for the capitalist in a capitalist society, maybe describe uh -huh. a social profit. No, uh, uh, but of course, uh, uh, such terms not uh, often used. But in a sense. Um, the profit that goes to one individual or a few individuals, or let's say, uh, speaking of the whole world, no? Uh, uh, what goes to less than 1% of the world population, so that in effect they own 82% of, of the wealth of the entire world, no? 82% they own. Uh, you, that will not happen. Um, and then... Uh, uh, so you have so you have the super rich in a society, and then you have mass poverty. So, but in a socialist society, um, everyone will be assured of uh, employment and uh, annual increases of uh, income, so long wage income, so long as uh, uh, they work, and uh, and then uh, aside from the wage, uh, uh, what is appropriated for. For, for wages, then you have uh, the capital for uh, reproduction, ex expansion of capital. You have to build, uh, you have to keep on growing uh, the economy, building uh, uh, more industries, and then uh, uh, you provide what you might call indirect wages uh, by uh, providing more social services. Uh, in health, education, housing, and so on. Um, by the way, that uh, actually, um, that uh, what I call indirect wages actually magnifies uh, the wages, the direct wages. Uh, now, augment, it augments and make larger the direct wages given to the workers. So, um, uh, what may be described as profit in a social society has a social character completely and uh, uh, quite different from profit as a private thing uh, as the result of exploitation of workers and for their further exploitation. Tito, um, next question, is it is it possible to have a non-antagonistic relationship between the capitalist and the workers in a capitalist society in the extent that the trade union is unnecessary? <laughs> no, the, the trade unions can never become unnecessary. Otherwise, uh, the, work, the workers will be pushed down to hell by the capitalist class. Uh, of course, in times of affluence, or uh, let's say, for instance, uh, just after the war, after, uh, after uh, uh, an alliance of communist and democratic for Bush and democratic forces got rid of uh, Hitler and the other fascists, uh, the... Um, uh, uh, the U.S. and uh, the other capitalist powers adopted what Mussolini, what Mussolini actually st started in, um, in Italy. They called social accord. No, the social accord. Uh, and, you know, that expression is also, was also used uh, uh, by Marcos to mean the same thing. No, social accord is putting together representatives of the workers, the capitalists, and the state or the government. No. And that triangular arrangement is two against one. <laughs> and that, that's, that's how they put one over the workers. Now, um, once upon a time before neoliberalism was very much adopted, even by the by German capitalism, you know, they used to speak of social market. Eh? You increase the wages of your workers precisely, so your uh, your market would uh, uh, grow, and then. Uh, workers who are even representative in the boards of, uh, uh, of uh, comp capitalist companies. But the problem there is, if representative, it, it looks good, huh? it seems to be good that workers sit in the board, in the capitalist board, but he, be, he you know, he follows. And the, the trade union will be, um, would be dictated upon, practically, uh, to keep the social peace between the capitalists and the workers. So that's the drawback. Uh, the um, the um, 
in, a, in the social accord, it's two against one, the workers, uh, and then um, the workers, uh, it just happens that, you know, these imperialist powers uh, were able to, uh, um, to recover from the war. So, and then um, most important, from the, from the time that there was reconstruction, the capitalist powers were able to, um, to, to uh, come together in fighting the so-called communist threat. Eh? And, the, and so they, uh, they could give concessions. They could even uh, make as a, a big, uh, a significant or strong kind of labor aristocracy because they were able to increase uh, the exploitation of uh, the, the oppressed uh, nations and peoples in the, in the third world. That is the key eh, to the imperialists being able to, you know, provide for a while uh, better times. Uh, now, you know, times are deteriorating. In, in the U.S., take the case of the U.S. Um, the U.S. Uh, from 1945 to 1975, the U.S. Um, 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 provided uh, a high level, a high level of income for the workers because you know uh, the U.S. benefited from war production and it was in uh, uh, command of the global economy from '45 to '75. But eventually, the U.S. would have problems. Um, there was a time when it was enough for the head of the family to have uh, a job. It would earn enough eh, to keep the family and have a car and so on and so forth. But later on, it would take uh, uh, the the woman would have to work and the children would have to contribute to eh, to the fund so of uh, the whole family. So there has been a deterioration in times prior to neoliberalism. Neoliberalism uh, was thought to be the solution, but no, uh, it simply covered up such problems of stagflation and so on and so forth. So, um, the, that's the case. Then, you know, uh, um, it looks like capitalism was, uh, uh, was able to avoid a crisis as big as the Great Depression. But now everybody talks about uh, uh, having the Great Depression, uh, something like as bad, something as bad as the Great Depression. Uh, problems since the financial crash of uh, 2008 have not been solved. And now you have now uh, a bigger problem of the world capitalist system. Yeah. All right. Next question, yeah. Tito. Um, this is from the audience. Uh, ask ko lang po kung may plano po ba ang mass movement para sa paniningil sa kapabayaan ng gobyernong ito laban sa COVID-19. Oh, natural. Uh, as a matter of fact, itong Duterte na ito, ano, maraming utang. Uh, tulad din yung mga kapwa niyang ano, uh, tinatawag na authoritarians, despotic uh, leaders uh, from Trump to Bolsonaro. Yung, uh, yung, ano, eh, yung criminal, yung kone, uh, irresponsibility ni Duterte, minalit niya yung problem ng, ano, ng COVID. Nagpapasok ng half a million Chinese travelers. Kaya ano, the whole country na infect, no? Uh, tapos, uh, ginawa niya ngayon, uh, napilitan na mag-lockdown. Ginawa na niya ang pagkakataon para ano, uh, magkamkam ng kapangyarihan, may emergency powers, pati pera na sinabi para sa mass testing, para sa food assistance and so on. Kinanya na. Uh, walang paliwanag kung pausa napunta yung 275 billion and then yung may mga donasyon ng mga private companies and from foreign governments. Ibinulsa na ni Duterte at saka yung mga kasabwat niya. Kaya ano yan, yung dapat singilin ng masa, yung hayop na yan. Uh, yung uh, hindi pwedeng ano, palampasin. As a matter of fact, habang nakalakdang mga tao, ano yun? Nagingit-ngit sila, nag-iipon ng galit at uh, mamaya bubugso yan. Uh, pag, uh, ano na, pag, uh, it's only a matter of time na mga tao bubugso. At uh, yung, uh, yung mismong... Ano, itong mga ruling class, sila-sila mag, maglalabanan. Kasi ano yan eh, itong si Duterte, sa pagkalaki-laki ng ninakaw, ano yan, may ambisyon, ala si Marcos, no? 
Bo, ang laki ng ang laki ng ano niya, ang laki laki ng pera niya, dapat i must convert into ano, capital na uh, reliable i must own, mm-hmm. eh? the, the most important enterprises kaya gusto niya i-shake down yung ano, eh, yung CABSCBN para uh, sa paggamit niya kay Dennis Oy maging kanya. Kung pabaya mo yung uh, halimaw na ganyan, oh wala ang Pilipinas kawawa. Uh, sh- ang uh, ang importante diyan na obserbasyon na uh, natin at uh, uh, by which we can uh, predict what will happen no? kung pinabaya mo yan uh, kawawa ang, ang ang bangsang Pilipinas at uh, siya na mismo nagpipilit sa taumbayan na umalsa para, mak- para lumaya sila sa labis-labis na pangapi at pagsasamantala Alright. Next question kito. Um, anong mga uh, ano mga oportunidad ang binubukas ng pandemya para sa pagsulong ng tunay na pagbabago sa lipunan tungo sa pagtagumpay ng pambansang demokrasya? Ano ang dapat gawin ng kilusang masa ng uri manggagawa at magsasaka para masis ang oportunidad na ito? Ay bawat tanayan, yan, bawat tao sa anumang uri na inaapi at pinagsasamantalahan, eh, dapat mag-isip kung paano. At yung mga uh, organisadong pwersa, sila rin ay mag-sumikap na abutin ang lahat ng tipo na individual at malawak na masa. Yung uh, ganito eh, sa People's Democratic Revolution, may mahalagang, may tatlong mahalagang sandata eh, nila eh. Yung, you know, yung leadership ng Revolutionary Party. Tapos yung uh, uh, People's War at People's Army, no? Patapos yung uh, United Front. Ngayon, uh, yung, ano, yung mga naunang revolusyonaryo, ano na yan? Na, nakapagtatag na sila ng partido at bayokbo. Pero hindi naman lahat nakakapagsandata, no? So, at saka hindi naman kahit gusto gusto na isang tao na sumama sa ano, uh, may ikon yan, may pwede, merong hindi pwede na sumama kagad. May different forms of struggle. At saka, may different forms of organizations. So, hindi lang party, eh, People's Army, National Democratic Front. Ano yon May mga uh, organisasyon na revolusyonaryo na tago. Meron naman yung kwan. Pwede naman yung... Uh, kahit sino uh, pwede magbuo ng legal na organisasyon para sa ano uh, mga uh, aktibidad na may tuturing na legal. So, may sari-saring paraan paano ipaglaban ang mga karapatan at kapakanan ng uh, sambayan ng Pilipino. Yung uh, halimbawa, anak bayan, ginagawa lahat na, uh, na kaya para mapa para ma-arouse, organize, at mobilize mga mga kabataan sa Pilipinas at saka sa abroad. So, tama yung ginagawa niya. Sa anumang kondisyon, kahit na inakalain ni Duterte na nahati-hati niya ng mga tao kasi lina, nag-lockdown, no? Naka-lockdown ang bawat pamilya sa kanyang bahay, no? Bo, uh, uh, mayroon naman paraan. Paano mo, ano, pw- pwede mag-communicate, di ba? O pwede mag-noise barrage, pwede mag-webinar. Ha? So, um, yung mientras na, no, ipakita mo rin na, no, it, it, make, it make some sense na may kwan, yung uh, may social distancing, yung hindi magtitipon marami. Pero after a while, hindi na, hindi na kaya ng ano, uh, sistema, nagaring sistema na manatili yan na matagal. Ito, uh, two months lang na gano'n eh, na may lockdown, ano na eh, hirap na economy, at sa galit na mga tao, dahil yung yung mga pinangako hindi na, na natupad ay <coughs> yung bagsak ang kabuhayan ng karamihan tao ang ang kuwanin ang pumapatay na mas maraming tao hindi covid-19 eh gutom ay ah, ganyan na kaya galit mga tao kay Duterte kaya ano yung at yung ano napakapayaman ang lupa napaka-fertile para sa ano sa kilusang pambansang demokratiko tungo sa pagpapabagsak ng itong bulok na uh, gobyerno at yung 
kabuan ng sistema ang uh, mapagsamantala. All right, Tito. So, uh, next question from um, IMA Europe ulit po. What corporations will be able to operate during the People's Democratic Republic and Socialist Construction? What corporation? What corporation? Corporation. Uh, may iba, iba, ibang tipo ng corporations, no? Um, Siyempre, ano yung dominant yung state corporations. Kasi ano yan eh, ang pamamalakad na dyan, hindi na yung mga, ano, uh, hindi na lang yung mga capitalist and their boardrooms, ano? Eh, may uh, state planning yan, may ministries in charge of production, hindi na lang basta burokrasya na, ano, sinusweldohan at uh, uh, gumagawa ng services para sa mga kapitalista. Yung, there will be productive ministries. So, <clears throat> in so far as, uh, as being able to uh act collectively corporations uh, are adapt are an, uh, a reform that are suitable uh, both in uh, domestic transactions as well as uh, uh, trans transactions with, with other countries and there would be corporations where you know, uh, in the period of transition young you know, young corp there can be a corporation a state private uh, a combination but uh, <clears throat> to make socialism uh, the state side, I mean to say the side representing the working class state, uh, would have to, you know, to become more and more dominant until uh, the capitalist uh, uh, age. Kasi ganito yan eh, sa China. Yung kwan, yung uh, mga kapitalista na hindi lumaban sa revolusyon kundi tumulong pa, uh, pinagbigyan yan. Pinagbigyan and then uh, wala naman si, si, wala naman silang problema sa kan eh pagkakaroon pagpapatuloy sa magandang buhay no uh, they can have their own attendance sincere sa malalaking bahay nila eh? mga anak nila walang problema sa education pagtanda na nila ano na niyan madali na nilang ano uh, iyambag sa lipunan yung private eh? yung private capital o kaya uh, there are ways of uh, there are ways of liquidating profit-making private capital. Ganito yan. Eh. Uh, first step yan, may share pa sa, may share pa sa, in terms of dividend. Mamaya, pwede na ano, habang na-socialize yung society, pwede na yung, ano, yung capital in life, it's like money in the bank. No? And then, tumanda na yan. Yung, they'll peter out, <coughs> their generation peters out. Uh, Ang masama lang kung mayroong sumulpot na parang dang shopping, ano? <coughs> Bubuhay yung, uh, yung mga ilang mga isay-isay na kapitalista at saka may mga bagong, ah, mga mga bagong, mga bagong elemente, mga revisionista na mag-isip parang kapitalista. Ayun, uh, pwedeng sumulpot muli yung, ano, yung, uh, uh, yung mapang, mapang samantalang uri ng burgesia. But, ano, there are methods, uh, Kasi yun yun, yun eh. um, in the course of uh, revolutionary struggle sa China, alam mo yun, Kwan, uh, nung naglalakihan na yung uh, hukbo, uh, syempre, mga textile companies, they, uh, uh, they pay taxes in the form of ano, uh, textile for the uniforms of the people's army. And for, for ano, they pay taxes for the maintenance of uh, uh, the people's government. Mga ganon. And then, dahil sa background na yan, i-accommodate mo yan sa ano, uh, period of transition. Eh yan eh, mga ano yan eh, bagay na nasa ano, ano ito yun? yung It's not the main, ano, main thing. Pag nagkaroon ng socialist revolution, it's just uh, a part of the, of the national effort to um, prevent unnecessary opposition. Uh, but even the, some uh, exploiting elements under control can be uh, can be allowed to make contributions because ano yan eh, uh, yung pagkamakabayan uh, is also a factor for them but watch out no they're still bourgeois <laughs> so anyway that's a complicated uh, uh, although only a part uh, of the part process of uh, building socialism how to liquidate a or uh, how to, uh, let's say, 
may, uh, use and minimize uh, positive things. For instance, you know, uh, alam nyo, uh, there will not be enough, pag halimbawa, today nanalo ang Philippine Revol ang revolutionary movement, there will not be enough to occupy the government positions. So, you retain the rank and file. Tanggalin mo lang yung mga, ano, yung, uh, uh, ano yun, nasa top level na uh, ayaw magbago-isip, no? Uh, ang ginawa yan, eh, pag nanalo yung revolusyon, eh, sa China, no? Uh, binigyan sila ng, ano, uh, courses on socialism, yung nasa bureaucracy. Then, uh, so many people will get educated under the new system. They replace the old crop. And the, the, the old crop of bureaucrats also uh, have a chance to learn, no? And uh, uh, they will follow what is clearly state policy that is really good for the people, quite different from the state policy of the, you know, uh, the overthrown reactionary state. All right. For our audience, po, our, uh, the floor for question and answer is still open. So if you have questions in mind, just drop it down sa aming comment box. And Tito Jo can answer it. Po. So uh, Tito, next question would be, does the modernization of industry have an effect on workers' wages? Well, what is called modernization is improving. Uh, improving... Uh, the machinery, the, you know, the capital goods that, that you have, the, uh, you keep on adapting uh, what is new and higher technology, more efficient. Um, you see, the, that's, uh, that's beneficial to the workers because uh, with the improvement in the efficiency of the, of the means of production that they use, their productivity also rises. Huh? Their skills rises and their tools uh, uh, allow them to produce more. So, no, yung, the rise of productivity due to the introduction of machinery um, also um, combines with the you know, uh, uh, advancement of the skills of the workers. And as I said before, uh, the rise in productivity does not go against the workers because the capitalist does not appropriate eh, the, the, the products of that productivity. Uh, so it's the workers who benefit in terms of higher wages and other things that have to be done uh, in order to make, a, um, uh, to make a prosperous economy and society. Not only prosperous, but uh, uh, a, uh, a society with a higher level of culture, because, you know, you will be producing a lot of uh, educated people with uh, uh, scientific and technological skills and uh, literary and other cultural skills huh, to improve uh, the life of the socialist society. All right. Tito, um, next question is, may pag-asa po bang mahamig ang mga reaksyonaryong hanay sa petty burgess o burgesia generally? Kasi marami silang tricks para hindi maniwala sa Marxismo gaya ngayon. Ang bansag nila ay luma na daw ang kaalaman na ito. At ano po ang mabisang sagot sa, ka, sa, kabil, sa kabalintunaan na ito? Dagdag kasi success ang punto ng buhay nila. Medyo ay, hindi ako nakapagtataka. Kapag yung intelligentsya, yung naka, nagkakaroon ng kwan, karamihan na nagkakaroon ng matas na level ng formal education, because of certain conditions, you know, they come from certain classes above the above the level of the poor peasants and uh, and the the workers, so so mentally din nila bourgeois na, o kahit galing sila sa landlord class, ano na advancement sa kanila eh, madala ano madaling isipin nila na to advance yung kwan it's a bourgeois way and through their uh, uh, professions even if they become independent from ano from uh, you know the benefits of a, a feudal life so um talaga natural na no in in the educational system yung uh, ang ideas and skills being taught ay kun yon in the service of the bourgeois state yan and in, in, uh, in the service of uh, bourgeois society and uh, people are offered the chances of social climbing, no? uh, climbing within the system. And uh, so it really takes some um, few at the beginning, 
right now in the Philippines, the progressives are no longer just uh, a small part of their, uh, you know, uh, their ideas, their uh, uh, program, and their line are quite sp widespread now. And uh, uh, the revolutionary organizations and the legal mass organizations are all over the Philippines. Uh, I, uh, I know that time when the, uh, in the 1950s, when the Cold War was regnant and uh, McCarthyism was reigning, kahit na discredited na sa U.S. Ano, in the University of the Philippines, McCarthyism was still a force to, to reckon with, no? Uh, pero kaiba nga na ngayon, nakakalat na mga progresibo. So, um, paano mangyayari ang pagbabago? Magbabago dahil sa kalukuhan ng mga nasa itaas. Yung mga, mga petiburges na ano, yung sumusunod lang sa mga linanghap nilang na ideya, they will get educated by the developments as a result of the crisis of the ruling system and ano, yung rise of the revolutionary forces. You know, yung ganito, uh, parang hopeless, ano? Ibiro mo sa social media, at there was a time, no? parang kay Duterte na yung social media, parang yung troll armies ni Duterte at eh, Marcos ang ano, uh, kumokontrol na ng temperament. Pero tingnan mo, yung dumami yung ano, yung kontra DDS, dumami. Hindi na, hindi na nasusolo tulad ng dati. So, ganito, yung uh, when the crisis shouts louder the truth, all the fake news producers, umawala, ma, ma, matatalo. At saka there's a people who has army to destroy the, you know, the system of violence. Huh? Di ba? So, because hindi na manalo yung revolution pag walang ano eh. Wala yung, yung armed revolution. No? Um, so, uh, importante dyan, meron talagang mga puwersa nakapokus sa ano process of revolutionary change and those who think they are uh, adaptable, uh, those who think they're happy in the existing system, or he even think uh, you know, madaling mag-isip yan if you press yung someone who is satisfied in the system kasi he's getting a good pay, he has the, a better kind of life than before, huh? kung anak lang ng mga rich peasant, tapos na he gets educated, he gets to be kwana, a manager, yung mga ganun, parang nakarating sa sa langit yan. Pero, madali mong, madali mong sa, sa, ano, sa conversation, eh kung talagang ano, di mo na pigil yung pagbabago, ano yung sabi? Oh, kami naman eh. Kami naman edukado eh. We are adaptable. Yan ang ibig sabihin <laughs> na yung mga profesional, yung mga burokrata, kapag nagbago na yung uh, nag, uh, yung uh, naghahari sa itaas, kapag yan o, no, yung naghahari sa itaas, natanggal, madali na ano yun, uh, madali na uh, saklawin ng United Front. No? Mas magi ang, pag nanalo na revolusyon, yung United Front, mas mabisa pa. Eh kung hindi ka pa nanalo eh, kung eh sa gandang kagandang loob at talino ng mga edukado, di ba? Sumasama sila kahit na may may risks, no? Ma mataas ang risk. Yan. Anyway, the most, the most important thing, when the crisis uh, puts the system in trouble and the crisis uh, speaks the truth more than the propaganda and even the all those uh, sophisticated you know, ideologies of the bourgeoisie, uh, yung mga uh, yung uh, proved to be false uh, o uh, in, impotent ano na yun? yung walang kwenta na yung system of propaganda an ideological system ng nagaharing uri alright Tito, next question uh, hypothetically Filipinos already won democratic revolution what relationship would the Philippines have towards other capitalist countries and their trade relationships? Ah, oh, pag nanalo ang revolusyon sa Pilipinas, kailangan makitungo sa uh, iba't ibang countries, many countries. Alam alam niyo si Hitler, si you know, si Lenin, bago na matay ano eh, yung yung an established Soviet Union had already you know, scores of ano, scores of uh, re, uh, countries uh, uh, with which the Soviet Union related, no? Yung ano eh, iba naman ng yung diplomatic relations um, 
mutual interest there could be uh, uh, irrespective of uh, the ideological system or uh, ideas or beliefs of uh, any of two sides. Ano yan? Um, mutual benefit could result from ano, uh, trade, uh, uh, cultural exchanges at a level uh, Juan, you, uh, even if uh, a certain state uh, uh, is not that progressive or is even reactionary, ano naman eh, uh, cultural exchanges are possible. But anyway, uh, the revolutionary government will sort out probably the kind of diplomatic relations. So it may has a policy of uh, relating with all countries willing uh, and their gov respective governments or that are willing to have relations because they need something from the Philippines and the Philippines also need something from them. So you have this uh, broad diplomatic policy. Then, of course, you give, uh, you give priority to relations with uh, revolutionary governments. Um, revolutionary by whatever measure, no? And they're also fighting for national independence or socialism. So uh, naturally, you will have closer relations with them. Especially if they have resources that uh, the Philippines would need, no? And uh, then there will be the people-to-people -people relations, aside from the people, the government-to-government -government relations. You have the pe the people-to-people -people relations. Uh, and uh, right now, even without uh, a revolutionary state in power in the Philippines, uh, mm -hmm. Filipinos, uh, overseas Filipinos, are already engaged in uh, relations with their host peoples and there are international organizations uh, where they can participate aside from the, uh, having their own Filipino organizations. So uh, things, <clears throat> things uh, that will develop in the future are already being prepared. All right. Ito, uh, I think this is the last question that we have from our audience and um, we'll proceed to the um, last question na po. So, Tito, um, any tips for organizing the Filipino migrants, workers, especially the youth now that COVID-19 further expose the weaknesses of the ruling system? Well, I think uh, Migrante International has been doing well when it's limited... Uh, uh, despite uh, limitations, uh, I say I speak of limitations because uh, naturally the government has is, 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 is its own operations to control the overseas uh, Filipino workers. But uh, I think Migrante International and its uh, various chapters enjoy more uh, enjoy more respect uh, uh, and uh, cooperation from the overseas Filipino workers. And uh, so uh, uh, it has come to pass that uh, respective of uh, the uh, government in the Philippines, uh, uh, Migrante is reliable. And Migrante is supported by various types of organizations. For instance, uh, Anakbayan, Gabriela, uh, and so many other uh, mass organizations have their own autonomous existence. Uh, at the same time, they cooperate with other Filipino organizations in uh, developing uh, relations of international solidarity. So uh, I think uh, uh, there are existing organizations and uh, there, uh, the necessity of having them of, and developing them further uh, is well demonstrated by the uh, worsening problems in the Philippines and also the worsening crisis in the world capitalist system, you know, um, many people now fear that uh, employment abroad uh, is being um, is being adversely affected by the economic slowdown. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, thousands of workers have returned to the Philippines. Uh, but of course, uh, I think the imperialists will need some uh, cheap labor <laughs> for some time. There will be no sudden collapse. But uh, while you have Filipinos abroad, then keep organizing them, keep arousing, organizing and mobilizing them so that they can help the motherland uh, to uh, to make fundamental changes. 
All right. Thank you so much, Tito, for being with us uh, to to teach us no about uh, this topic and answering our questions. Po. Um, a few announcements, uh, guys. Uh, next week we are studying Communist Manifesto. Po that is for the um, May 31 discussion. No, so um, a standby lang po tayo for updates sa ating Facebook group. And we please also join the April 28 coalition protest for the rise and uh, rights and welfare of migrants and refugees that will take place every Saturday. So that sa ngayong Sabado, makisama, makibahagi po tayo sa kanilang protesta para ipa, ipaglaban ang karapatan ng uh, bawat manggagawa at mga refugees abroad. Ano? So uh, check out the... For, um, also, please stand by, um, check out the first and only radio show of the Filipino youth in Europe, Radio Silakbo. Catch us every Tuesday and Fridays every 8 p.m. And uh, we would have a news and um, makabuluhang talakayang discussion kasama ang ating mga kabataang, uh, kabataan sa Europe. Ano po. So uh, I think dyan po nagtatabos ang ating discussion. Um, another productive day po at masayang araw ng pagkatuto. Mga kasama, uh, abangan, po, abangan po ulit natin yung susunod na discussion next week, May 31. No? Same time, same, same, same time, same place. Uh, we will be discussing Communist Manifesto. So make sure to note this on your calendars and um, we'll catch an update for on, on our Facebook group and the line online for updates. Tito, uh, may uh, final words po ba kayo before we close um, our discussion today? Ay, namamahalam din ako at uh, umaas ako na uh, magsama-sama tayo muli sa susunod na session natin. Uh, okay. All right, Tito. Mabuhay po tayo. Mabuhay po tayong lahat, Tito. So, uh, kayo sa ating mga audience, mag-invite pa po na maraming kaibigan, kapamilya, at kahit sino man para mag-participate sa aming event. Sumabaybay at matuto dahil mas malakas tayo kapag mas pero marami. Um, maraming salamat po sa pakigibahagi ulit. Ako po si Kasamang Christ. At ito po si Tito Joma, mapagpalayang uh, hapon po sa ating lahat. Pagwawasto, magdaluyong Narito ako Para ang galat na lahat Na pulo Magiging muon Na buo Para sa masang ating Pilipino, dar
dito tayo para ang kalat-kalat na pulong magiging muong 